We're in a new normal. This is a permanent situation. It's a permanent change. There is pre-2008 and there's post-2008. 2008 was the demarcation time. And then there are the folks who are angry. They're the ones you hear most about. Uh, they're really scared. They're scared. And they've got a right to be scared. If you're not scared, you haven't been listening. These are scary times. These are, these are very, very uncertain times and people are afraid and they don't know what's going to happen in the future and the stock market is jumping up and down every day because all the people in the stock market are afraid and they don't know what's going to happen in the future and uncertainty is the stock market's enemy. And there are folks out there that, that are having trouble expressing this and they express their fear through anger because they know that someone's to blame for this. And their job in life is to find that person that is doing this to them <laughs> and scream at them and pound on their chest until they quit doing this to them. And it's really not about that. It's really not about that at all. The world changed. And that's more uncertainty, but there are people who will react with, with intense, intense anger that's rising out of fear. And then the third phase is, and I think you're going to hear a lot of that in, in the, this one in the next few months, is if we can just return to the old values. This is the bargaining phase. If we can just return to the old values. If we can just be more liberal. Or if we can just be more conservative. Or if we can just be more Christian. Or if we, and you've, you've all heard all these things, I think. This is the one I like. If we can just return to the way we used to do things in Minnesota when Minnesota worked. It's a great sentiment. And we've got a great history. And it's a wonderful idea. Except this doesn't have anything to do with values. We're not talking about values here. The new normal finds values irrelevant. They have nothing to do with value. Your chronological age does not depend on your value system. If you're 60, you're 60. It doesn't matter whether you're a liberal, conservative, <laughs> Christian. It, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. It, uh, you're still 60. And so it doesn't really have anything to do with your values, but there will be a lot of folks that will view this as a value thing. And if we can just return to those old values, everything's going to become copacetic. And then there's the fourth phase, is the one you're probably in right now, uh, <laughs> is the depression phase after listening to me for a while. Uh, okay, let's get through that one real fast. Uh, and go to the acceptance phase. And the acceptance phase is really interesting because the acceptance phase says, okay, change happens. There was the old normal, there's a new normal. The new normal means this. We've got to do things a little differently, don't we? We have to think about things a little differently. We could have prepared for this because we knew this was going to happen 40 years ago. There should be no surprises here, but people were like, hey, I didn't know that. So it happened. And, and it's come, and 2008 has come and gone, and we're now in the post-2008 period. We are in the new normal. And what's interesting about this is that, you know, it really is going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. We will find a way to deal with all this. And what's interesting is this is the time to look for the opportunities. The people who get to acceptance first are the ones who look for the opportunities. And some of them will be the ones that will un uncover the golden nugget, will uncover the great opportunity. If you wait until after everybody else has found all the golden nuggets and then jump in, it's too late. The states and the cities that, that become the powerhouses of the future are the ones that are looking for the opportunities today. In the midst of darkness, in the midst of troubled times and great uncertainties, 
They will be the ones that say, aha, there's a better way of doing this. There's a whole new thing here. And this is what we need to do. And they will be the ones that will lead the way and become the next great powerhouse. This, this session, this coming January, you know, this last legislative session, I know there's a couple of you that spent probably a little bit of time with the legislature. Um, it, it was a lot of not much fun. I, I, I don't know, does anybody think the, this last session was a lot of fun? Uh, next session's gonna be worse. Next session's gonna be worse. There is no low hanging fruit left on the tree. There is no middle hanging fruit left on the tree. There is no high hanging fruit left on the tree. There is no fruit left on the tree. <laughs> we have done all the shifts. We have kicked the can as far down the road as we can possibly kick it. We've done everything we can, and we still got a problem. And we come back, the legislature comes back next session, and your problem is somewhere in the multiple billions of dollars. I, you know, some have it at five and a half billion dollars, other at seven and a half billion dollars. And let's say we find a way through cut, 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 cut. Let's just cut stuff. Cut out local government aid, cut out roads, cut out parks. Let's just shut all the parks down. Uh, let's let the prisons open up the prisons, let all the prisoners out. You know, whatever it takes to cut down, cut, 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 and then you come back two years later and you got the same problem. And then you cut again until there's nothing left. And you come back two years later and you got the same problem. Because the issue is really about an aging society. And, and long-term care that is, and, and health care issues that are rising at an incredibly rapid pace, and they are outstripping everything else, and every state government and almost every local government is in a deficit situation because of this. And it's not gonna go away until we find solutions to the basic issue that is, that is at hand. So, the question is, we've got the new normal, and it's going to be with us for as few, for as long, how far out as we can see. Should we really fear the new normal? Okay, we're going to solve this. We know that future economic growth is going to depend on increasing, increasingly, on increasing pro worker productivity and less on simply adding more warm bodies to the workforce. That's where most of our economic growth is going to happen. Private sector always pushes on this. The private sector, per worker productivity is one of their main focuses. They're pushing and pushing and pushing constantly. We're going to need to find major, major league improvements in per worker productivity. Where is that going to come from? And one of the main sources that that could potentially come from is the public sector.